Thank you, Casper, and um, thank you for all for being here. Thank you for wanting to chair this session. I know you put a lot of time and effort into it, and I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. And I, I feel very privileged that I'm actually allowed to introduce this debate, because it's true, it's very topical. There's a lot of discussion in the Netherlands right now about the role of the university in society. And um, as an administrator, you're always in a little bit of a precarious position, and I'm very aware of that. And today, I feel I'm even more in a precarious position. And I was actually thinking last night about your anecdote, Professor Kalini, um, about your 21-year-old self, self talking to um, the absolute expert on utilitarianism and feeling like you knew everything about it. Today is my, it's the exact day that I've been in this role for four years. It's the first day of my next four years. Um, so that's a very short period of time. To be, so to be talking to you as an expert and to all these other experts that are here, the people who've been working at this university, for this university, for so much longer, makes me feel a little bit like you must have felt when you were 21 years old. I have two advantages though. Um, there are lots of people who will actually lead the debate, seven distinguished colleagues, so I can sit back a little bit. And I'm very aware of the fact that you're the world expert on this topic, so I know that I'm not going to uh, say things that I, in retrospect, may feel are completely uncalled for. So let me introduce you again, and probably unnecessarily so, but still, um, it's, it's a pleasure to do that. You're a professor of intellectual history and English literature at Cambridge University, and you've been involved in debates about the university for a long, long time. And it's wonderful you wrote this very important book, and it's even more wonderful that you're actually willing to come to our university and engage with us in this very important topic. Um, and I think when we're asking the question, what are universities for, we're basically also asking the question, who does the university belong to? <clears throat> and you touched on that in your excellent speech yesterday, which I think we all tremendously enjoyed. I heard lots of really, really positive comments about it. It's very thought-provoking. And you had a whole list of people that may feel that the university belongs to them. Um, the government, the taxpayer, the students, the rector, the vice rector maybe, the professors, support staff. And like a true academic, you ask lots of questions in your book and in your speech, uh, but you answer very few. And I think that's actually the role of academia, to ask many more questions than anybody can answer. Um, and you also talk about how important it is to never be done with answering questions. I think that's research and science and and research intensive education by definition. We're never done with answering questions. So I was thinking about who does the university belong to when I was reading last night on um, the internet what happened in Amsterdam yesterday where students weren't allowed to talk on stage at the opening of their academic year and I know you're going to Amsterdam today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Um, to talk to them. And um, one of the reasons that this whole uh, debate with the, the leadership team, the administration of the university, I think got so out of hand is that it wasn't clear who Amsterdam University belongs to. I think one of the, the moments in time when Louise Gunning, the president who had to step down, uh, made a mistake is when she came into the Maartenhuis, the building that houses the administration, that at that point had been occupied by students. And she said, you need to get out of our Maartenhuis, my Maartenhuis. And the students were really upset about that because it wasn't her Maartenhuis. And now maybe the students are going the other way around because I saw the picture yesterday, the video footage of them protesting in front of the, the building that the Lutherse Kerk where the opening is going to be held. Um, and some of the students held up a sign saying, we are the uni. And I'm not sure that that's true either. And in a way, I think it's wonderful that we all feel that the university belongs to us, because maybe it belongs to all of us, but then who, who are us? So I'm sure these are questions that are going to be discussed today. And I'm going to listen very, very carefully, because I think that's hugely important for someone who is in the administration, because I feel like I have to take care of so many different parties. I, I'm responsible for the students' well-being, in the end, finally, I'm responsible for the teachers' and professors' well-being, and we're also being chased by the government, the taxpayer, and the parliament, actually, to do things a certain way. And Dutch parliament is very involved in the role of universities right now, 
they are sometimes having micro debates about how Leiden University should treat its students and teachers. And that makes it very hard for the leadership, for the rector and vice rector to actually treat our students and teachers the way we think we should treat them because we're also dependent on government funding. So there are lots of really wonderful issues to discuss. And there's one, one um, paragraph in your book which I thought was particularly interesting and that's about accreditation and about accountability and that's that's those are buzzwords in the Netherlands right now and I think they're often very much in the way and at Leiden University we're trying to actually lead a debate to talk about much more independence for universities much more independence for teachers about how they want to teach their students and what you say in your book is that um, you believe that the process of reporting that people feel uh, that accountability uh, you talk about the fallacy of accountability, that is the belief that the process of reporting on an activity in the approved form provides some guarantee that something worthwhile has been properly done. And I think that's exactly what it is, it's a fallacy, but unfortunately many of our parliamentarians don't really understand that. And what I see, what I have seen these last four years is that our staff, our support staff, our professors, our researchers, they are working so incredibly hard. People are so enormously devoted. And the idea that the government needs to come in and make sure that we all do our jobs and that that will actually improve the quality of our teaching, I think, is a huge fallacy. And there's one line that I also want to read from your book which particularly touched me because I'm often very worried about the level of engagement and dedication that people in the university show. They're working far too hard. I get too many emails sent in the middle of the night when I ask very busy people to do something like today, Casper, would you organize this meeting? Of course Casper organizes the meeting even though he's far too busy with his own work and it's probably cost him valuable hours of sleep. And somewhere in your book you, you say, and you talk about the system of surveillance and you talk about an alternative and I really love that line. A system of surveillance to desi designed to make sure that people didn't overwork might actually contribute something towards so-called efficiency. I'm going to remember that one and see what I can do with it. Um, so yeah, what, what, what are universities for? Who does the university belong to? You ended yesterday by saying that it's actually universities are for future generations. And I think that's an incredibly important guiding principle. And what we need to make sure is that we preserve them, that we don't destroy them, and that we keep the very essence of universities because everybody understands how incredibly important they are. That's why we all feel ownership. That's why there's such a heavy debate. And I think that's wonderful. That's really good. But if we all remember they don't belong to any one of us, they don't belong to one party, a group of individuals, they actually belong to the future. And I often think of leading a university and teaching students in terms of parenting. There's a lot of the same kind of thinking in parenting. You're not parenting your children because they belong to you. You're not parenting them because they're giving you something back. You parent them because they need to go into the world and become the citizens that you want them to be. And you think you actually have something to give to them, your experience. And I want to, to end my little introduction um, by reading a poem that I really love. It's by Khalil Gibran, the Persian poet that lived in the early uh, 20th century and it's his poem on children and it reads as follows your children are not your children they are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself they come through you but not from you and though they are with you yet they belong not to you you may give them your love but not your thoughts for they have their own thoughts you may house their bodies but not their souls for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow which you cannot visit not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life does not go backwards, nor dwells in yesterday. So for me, that really signifies something in the way we can also think about our university. So I'm now gonna step down and listen to everything that's gonna be said and hopefully learn some lessons that I can use in my next four years. And I'm really, really looking forward to a very open debate. You told me yesterday you love open debates, I told you the Dutch are very direct and you said, great, I'm going to put on my boxing gloves. So I hope you're going to need them today and I really wish uh, for a very lively and insightful discussion. Thank you very much.